Good morning, everyone. I am Jonathan Bryce from the OpenStack Foundation, and it is awesome that, uh, that you all are joining us for the next couple of days at our first Open Dev event. Um, this is a, an event that we, uh, we started planning earlier this year um, for a couple of different reasons, and, uh, and what we wanted to do was really have an opportunity to get people together who are working across multiple communities in open source and who are trying to solve um, kind of uh, multi-dimensional problems in their businesses. And initially this was an idea that we had um, that, was, that was kind of more generic around uh, just you know, broad open source community at large. Uh, as we started to talk about it, one of the things that we found um, was really an emerging trend uh, that, was, uh, that was common across a lot of companies and a lot of these technology communities was the rise of edge computing. And that is, uh, is our theme for, uh, for this open dev event. And it's very exciting to, uh, to kick it off. We've got about 200 people registered for, uh, for the event. Um, for the most part, you're, uh, you're all technical in one way or the other. So this is meant to be a working event. And, uh, and we're gonna ha hopefully have a, a couple of productive days here and, and some good outcomes. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that is, uh, is hopefully gonna look like. Um, to start off with, I did wanna thank the, uh, the sponsors that, that made this event possible, Ericsson, Intel, and the OpenStack Foundation. Um, you know, all provided the funding that we, that we needed to, uh, to get a venue and, and be able to get everyone together um, in order to, to have these days. And I also wanted to call out and thank our programming committee that, uh, that helped kind of plan the topics and, uh, and, and really also reach out across multiple industries to bring experts together, architects, developers, engineers, um, people who are working in this space. And I think that uh, most of you are right down here. If you stand up, Gregory, Andrew, Condon, <laughs> Beth, and uh, Chris Price is somewhere too. But um, definitely uh, find them and, uh, and thank them for their work. They've spent hours over the last couple of months um, going through, looking in their businesses, talking to people they work with to figure out you know, what are the things that we need to address. So how is it gonna work over the next couple of days? Um, we're starting off this morning with a series of, of short keynotes that, uh, that are coming from, um, from AT&T, from Intel, uh, Verizon, from um, Sacha, who is, uh, who, who's sort of the inventor of edge computing as a concept, and also from eBay. And what I hope we can do this morning as we run through, we're gonna see some use cases, we're gonna see some demos, we're gonna hear about um, some of the people who are already working in edge computing, and hopefully we can get a vision for what this can be, and, uh, and what the problem space looks like, and where this is going to go. Over the last six months, really, I've seen um, this be something that is emerging across many industries. I think when people think about edge, a lot of times they think about IoT, and they think about telecom, and that's certainly a big part of edge, but it's really only one part of it. And what I've seen is I've seen people who are working in retail who have a lot of locations, and people who are working in manufacturing, people who are working in um, offshore drilling, people who are doing work in all kinds of industries, they're facing um, similar problems, and, uh, and that's really what, what drove this, uh, this event. And so this morning, you know, we're gonna have some keynotes, look at some of those, those different, uh, different problem sets that we wanna address, and then we're gonna have lunch, and lunch is, um, is going to be outside around the corner here. There are uh, food trucks that are gonna be here for us to, uh, to be able to get some great food. And then this afternoon, we're gonna be breaking out into three breakout tracks. So this, where we all are right now, is level one. And if you go out towards um, the entrance where everyone entered, uh, to the left there, there are elevators and stairs that go up to level two and level three. And so there, are, there are, is a room on level two and a room on level three. And um, you can see the full schedule at opendevconf.com slash schedule. Uh, so follow that. We're gonna be updating that too as we, uh, as we go through. And if you look at that right now, um, most of the sessions are in there, and a lot of them have Etherpad links. How many of you have been to an OpenStack Design Summit before? Okay, cool. So most of you are going to be familiar with, uh, with, with kind of the, the mechanics of this, but in each of those rooms, there's a set of, uh, of um, 
a whiteboard, there's a giant post-it pad, there are screens, we've got ether pads, the rooms are set up in kind of that horseshoe shape, and the, uh, the goal is to really dive deep on a topic and document as much as we can in the ether pads. Um, we have moderators assigned for the various topics, and we're going to gather all of that information, and tomorrow uh, we're gonna come back here on level one at the end of the day and, uh, and review what, what we covered, what the action items are, what we can go do, and, uh, and you know, where, we, where we take edge from, uh, from here going forward. Tomorrow morning, uh, we're actually starting out with uh, a 15 minute session that's gonna be you know, very quick and informal, and tomorrow, the afternoon sessions are, are actually not scheduled yet. Because what we wanna do is we know that as we have the discussions today, and as we have our informal hallway track, we're gonna come up with topics that you know, we didn't foresee, or things that come up that we need to spend more time on. So throughout the day, as you think of those, write it on a pad in, in any of the rooms. We're gonna gather all of those, and tomorrow morning, we're gonna sit together and we're going to uh, spend 15 minutes. We have six sessions uh, that are unconference style that we're gonna schedule tomorrow. Um, so uh, if, you, you know, if there's a, a topic that you think is really important that isn't on the schedule or that there's not a good place to, to discuss it, um, don't worry, we, uh, you know, we can fill that in tomorrow. And, uh, um, and then we'll you know, have more working sessions than I said, we'll gather at the end tomorrow to, um, to, to go ahead and review everything that was covered. Um, so some, uh, some other housekeeping items, um, Wi-Fi information should be on the back of your badge, and, uh, and the, um, uh, one of the things that we're gonna be doing tonight that should be fun is just around the corner, there's a, a winery um, location here, it's called Wineworks, Dog Patch Wineworks, and we will be heading over there at the end of today uh, for a happy hour from 5.30 to 7.30, so hopefully we can, uh, we will see you all there and we can talk about what we uh, discussed today and make a plan for tomorrow. So I talked a little bit about how the event got started, um, but I wanna talk briefly before we get into the, uh, the keynotes about why I think it's important and what I hope we can get out of this. So NFV is something that, um, you know, very heavily used, very heavily uh, um, discussed and developed on in the OpenStack space now. But that really started in 2014. And, uh, and a lot of that um, kind of came out of uh, a keynote that Toby Ford presented in, uh, in the, uh, the summit in Atlanta in, in 2014. And at the time, he kind of talked about the shift that his industry was going through and what they needed to, to get off of um, kind of hard to change, proprietary, black box um, systems into something that was more agile, more software driven. Uh, you know, you fast forward to where we are now, over three years later, and there is a lot of work that's been done in NFV, and there are a lot of workloads that are being run in that space. But between here and there, one of the things that I think we learned along the way was that we had some false starts with, uh, with NFV. You know, Toby said, like, this is a vision, and I'm putting it out there, but it's gonna take a while, and it's gonna take a lot of work. And, uh, and he was right. But I think that one of the things that, that, we, um, that we sort of missed on early on was getting together developers, operators, architects, getting everyone in the space together to, uh, to sort of talk about what the goals were, what the needs were, and how um, some of these workloads were different than just traditional cloud workloads. And as I said, you know, over the last six months, I've been talking to a lot of companies who are working on, on edge computing, and I think that what, uh, what I'm really seeing in, in more industries than, than I expected, honestly, is that uh, the concept of very large centralized data centers is not the only way uh, that they can meet their computing needs. And so we are seeing um, companies who have definitely you know, large central data centers. Those might be private clouds or public clouds, but they also have smaller computing centers, and they might have several rings of those, um, you know, kind of multiple layers of, of, uh, of computing out to the very edge where you might have small devices. And as I talked to these companies, what I started to hear were different terminologies, different architectures, different approaches, and it kind of, uh, it, it gave me a little bit of a flashback <laughs> to 2014 and 2015 with NFV. And what I, uh, what I thought we really needed to do was to try to get a group of, of people who are working on this um, together earlier in the process 
so that we could hopefully, you know, shorten some of those cycles and come together around what the goals are and what the needs are and where feature gaps might be. Um, and that's, that's really how we got to this edge focus for, for open dev. And I think that, you know, it, if you think about that problem set of moving from central data centers uh, to, you know, more and more computing that's spread out, it makes a lot of sense when you look at, at the estimates, you know, 10 billion, uh, devices that are, that are connected to the internet, and it just continues to grow. You know, there's, there's a, a lot of estimates, they range all over the place, you know, from, from 15 to 50. Um, some people have even said a trillion. I think that that is probably a little bit, um, you know, uh, uh, that's probably farther off than the next five to 10 years. But whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You know, we're talking tens of billions of devices that are all generating data, um, that are generating work that needs to be analyzed, computed, put into machine learning systems. And so, you know, what are the patterns, what are the technologies that people are gonna use to attack that? SDX Central just recently ran a survey um, and they asked people, you know, as you implement edge computing, what technologies are you going to be using in that? And this was, uh, this was the, the, um, the result that they just released this week. And what's, what I think is really, really interesting about this data is if you look at this, most of these technologies are open source technologies. And that is a big shift from, you know, where technology development happened just a couple of decades ago. The other thing that I think is interesting about this is it's multiple different communities. And so when I think about a problem like this, I think this fits very well with something that, uh, that Mark Collier said at, in a keynote, um, in Austin last year where he said, the problems we're facing today are too big for any one company, any one country, any one community to take on and tackle on their own. And so an event like this that spans um, all of these different technologies I think is really important if we wanna be able to put the right uh, implementations in place to solve um, these massive problems, these awesome problems that, uh, that companies and organizations are facing all around the world. So, for me, I have three goals that I would love to see us accomplish over the next couple of days with this event. The first one is to build those relationships that I think sometimes we, we lacked in the early days of, of NFV work between the practitioners, the architects, the developers who are building infrastructure software, and let's make sure that we know and understand you know, who is, uh, who's working on this on, on all sides of the problem. The second thing that uh, I think we should come out of this with is is a whole set of documentation around the use cases that, uh, that we need to be addressing, um, architecture and deployment patterns that people are already implementing, um, ideas for ways to improve those, and then also you know, best practices for management, operations, security. When you start to, to really spread out your computing, um, these things start to look very different than when you're running a very large scale lockdown physically secure um, data center. So let's, you know, the people who are already doing this, let's pick your brains, you know, share your wisdom, let's get it documented, and, uh, and publish that so that we can, uh, we can all benefit from it and, and we can move things forward more quickly. And then the third area is, um, I, I'd, I'd like to see us triage the needs for open projects. And that's for both feature gaps in existing open technologies, you know, what, what might be missing, what might need to, uh, to, to be built in um, into an existing component like Nova or Kubernetes or um, Ceph or whatever it might be, Open Contrail, any of these technologies that, that people are already using in the space. I also wanna look at the functionality mismatches with existing open technologies. Um, let's, let's really be honest about, are we trying to put square pegs in round holes? Or do we have tools that are close and just need a little adjustment? Or are the tools not at all the fit and we need to look somewhere else? And as we do that, there may be areas where we need actually completely new projects, um, or there may be other projects that exist out there that some of you are aware of that the rest of us don't know about. Um, but really, let's, let's think about the technology and let's think about it critically so that we can come up with the work that, that we need to do. As I said, tomorrow, um, at the end of the day, we are going to all gather back here and we're going to have kind of a lightning round where we're gonna review every topic that we had across all three tracks, the takeaways, and um, hopefully come up with some, uh, some work to, uh, to go back to our respective communities and our companies um, where we can go 
really uh, make a practical difference around this. Um, the, in each of the breakout rooms, as I said, there are screens, there are uh, post-it notes, there are whiteboards. Uh, the OpenStack Foundation has staff members that are going to be in every session helping to document and, uh, and then, you know, to aggregate all of that information back up. Um, so, uh, you know, lean on them and, uh, and um, you know, make sure that, uh, that we're really getting as much information as we can out. It doesn't have to be pretty in these discussions. We'll, you know, we'll organize it later. Um, but really we want to come out with some good, solid information from, uh, from each of these sessions and then work that we can go forth and, uh, and execute on um, to make this, uh, this, this edge vision a reality. So that's all the time I'm going to take to kick it off. As I said, we've got, uh, we've got a series of speakers this morning that are going to, um, that are going to talk in mostly um, you know, real-world terms about what Edge is today and where it can go in the near future. And, uh, and then we've got a, a special privilege to have, as I said, Satya, who is the, um, the founder of, of Edge Computing, who is going to wrap up the morning and, uh, and show us, hopefully, you know, he's going to stretch our brains and, and give us a, some, uh, some exciting concepts for where we can take edge over the next decades and how it can really impact our lives. So to kick things off, I want to go ahead and bring up Condon from AT&T to, uh, to give us our first keynote. So Condon. <laughs> 